Mr. Chauvin, uh, you and I have had several discussions throughout the course of my representation of you relevant to your right to testify or to choose to remain silent, correct? That's correct. And during the course of our representation, it's fair to say uh, that you and I have had this conversation multiple times, correct? Correct. Uh, you understand that you have a Fifth Amendment privilege to remain silent? Do you understand that? Yes. You understand that if you choose to exercise that right to remain silent, neither the state nor the court can comment on your silence as a sign or an indication of your guilt. Meaning they can't say, he didn't get up and defend himself, so equate your silence with guilt. Do you understand that? Yes. All right. Now, you also understand that you can waive that right and testify. Do you understand that? Yes, I do. You understand that if you chose not to testify, or if you did in fact testify, you would be subject to cross-examination by the state of Minnesota? Yes. You understand that if you uh, were cross-examined by the state, we could not attempt to limit the scope of your testimony. The state would be given broad latitude to ask you questions. Do you understand that? Yes. We've had this conversation repeatedly, correct? Correct. I have repeatedly advised you that this is your decision and your decision alone, right? Correct. Um, I have advised you, uh, and we have gone back and forth on the matter, would be kind of an understatement, right? Yes, it is. Um, but after a lengthy meeting um, last night, we had some further discussion, agreed? Correct. And um, have you made a decision uh, today whether you intend to testify or whether you intend to invoke your Fifth Amendment privilege? Uh, I will invoke my Fifth Amendment privilege today. Right. Mr. Schumer, I'm going to address you directly uh, uh, because the decision whether or not to testify take this off, is entirely yours. In other words, it's a personal right. Mr. Nelson makes a lot of the decisions in trial, but one he cannot make for you is whether or not you testify. And he can give you advice, and you can take that advice or reject that advice. But the decision ultimately has to be yours and not his. Uh, is this your decision not to testify? It is, Your Honor. All right. Do you have any questions about your right to remain silent or to testify on your own behalf? Not at this time, I don't. All right. Does anyone uh, promise anything or threaten you in any way to keep you from testifying? No promises or threats, Your Honor. Do you feel that your decision not to testify is a voluntary one on your behalf? Yes, it is. Now, in addition to that, I'm convinced uh, then that this is your personal decision uh, and that you are aware of your rights, but there is a jury instruction that may be read to the jury. This, again, is the one that you get to weigh in on. It's not for your lawyer to make the decision. Again, he can give you advice, and I don't you know, don't want to know what the advice is, but you can accept the advice or reject the advice as to whether or not to give this instruction. Uh, if you would like, I can read this instruction to the jury. Uh, it's titled, Defendant's Right Not to Testify. The state must convince you by evidence beyond a reasonable doubt that the defendant is guilty of the crime charged. The defendant has no obligation to, pr to prove innocence. The defendant has the right not to testify. This right is guaranteed by the federal and state constitutions. You should not draw any inference from the fact that the defendant has not testified in this case. Do you understand that instruction? Yes, Your Honor. Would you like that read to the jury? Yes, Your Honor. Have you had enough time to talk to Mr. Nelson about whether that's a good idea or not? I have, Your Honor. All right. And so I will read that to the jury on your request. 